very, very last dish is a very quick soup. Very last one, because we've gone on long enough, which I'm going to cook in the cake baker. If you've got a two oven agra and you've got a cake baker, don't just bake cakes in it. It's a stock pot, it's a soup pot, it's a stew pot. And this is a very quick soup, dependent entirely on the quality of the stock you're using. This is homemade chicken stock. My chicken stock is very dark because I don't peel my onions. If you peel onions for stock, it's much paler. This is supermarket stock, which has had some extraordinary filtration process going on with it. You can see that mine is, you know, you couldn't sell that. But the taste is amazing. So I'm just putting some stock in a pan, stick it on the boiling plate to come up to the boil, and then I'm going to flavour it. This is a sort of Thai style soup. Well, it's Thai style soup from Nether Wallop, so it's not that Thai style. And I've got a red chilli, which I've just cut into chunks. No need to take out the seeds, no need to do anything fancy. I've also got some stem ginger, or rather root ginger, which I've just sliced about the size and thickness of a pan coin. Again, don't peel it, there's no need. And I've also got a couple of cloves of garlic, which I've chopped up. And that all goes into the stock and flavours the stock as it comes up to the boil. As it's coming up to the boil, they float around, they flavour it. You can, if you want to make this soup as a sort of standby in the freezer, flavour your stock, strain it and freeze it. But remember, it is full of chilies, and so you don't want to put it into a chicken dish or something. You have to label it very carefully in the freezer that you've got chilli stock. And the next thing that goes in is a lime, which I've just cut in half. I'm just going to squeeze in some lime juice. The lime juice changes the colour of the stock, makes it cloudy and very pale. It's gone pale, can you see? But it's delicious. So it's stock, chilli, ginger, garlic, lime, Thai fish sauce, nam pla which is disgusting if you smell it on its own. But if you put it into things, it's the seasoning they use. I mean, have a, if you can be brave enough, it's made of fermented anchovies. But it just gives a wonderfully magical Thai flavour to the food. And then I've got some Thai lime leaves, which I'm going to crush in. You don't have to put them in if you haven't got any. You can strain this stock. I quite like to leave it with the bits in because you get, Mum, there's a rhododendron leaf in my soup. But it's, it does flavour it. It smells strongly oriental and exotic. I hope you don't mind me passing things around to have a sniff at. So there's the stock for the soup. The longer you leave the chilies in the hot stock, the more they flavour it. So I quite like it quite strong you can strain it or not. And the next thing that goes in is some rice noodles, these very fine rice noodles which go white when they cook. And they're portion controlled, they come in a packet, portion controlled, one handful per person, theoretically, although school holidays it's two handfuls per person. I'm going to break those up and pop them in. And then I've got some raw prawns which go in, and when they're pink, the soup's ready. It's very, very quick and easy, because if you look at Thai recipes for Tom Yum Gung, they go on and on, really complicated. This, you just throw it all in the pot. When the prawns are pink, it's ready to eat. Easy as that. And to finish it off, I've got lots and lots of fresh coriander, which I'm just going to chop in. Snip it in, green so it looks like you've made an effort. The wonderful lemony flavour is delicious. This is far more filling than you think. Sometimes we have it for lunch and you don't need any bread because you've got all the noodles. It really is quite filling. I'll give that another second or two for the prawns to warm up. And just before you serve the meal, you need one of these. It looks like a scruffy old flannel. It's called an e-cloth. It's a miracle of modern technology. You just wipe and the agar comes clean. 
you wipe the argo with an ordinary dishcloth, it leaves a smeary trail and you have to come along and polish it with your tea towel. But with the e-cloth, you just wipe. And the standard pose of the new argorona. <laughs> Arga understand this. You can actually get a heat-proof mitt that you can stroke your argo all day without hurting yourself. It's the most wonderful cooker. It's such a friend in the kitchen.